All right, and we're back with another haul. This one comes straight from the UK. I got this during the recent Aero UK sale. I think that ended on, what, May 1st or 2nd, something like that. And all of these are films that are put out by Third Window Films, so they are all Japanese films. I already opened them, but I didn't open them on camera. So let's take a look at what I got. Most of these are blind buys, mostly because I like the directors or I want to learn more about the directors, or they just looked really awesome. So let's get into it. All right, and the first one that I'm going to talk about is one that is a complete blind buy, and that is Osama Tezuka's Barbara. This one I remember seeing the trailer for maybe about a year or two ago, and I thought it looked interesting, but for some reason I didn't make the connection that it was an adaptation of a Osama Tezuka manga, right? I think it sounds very interesting. It looks really cool. I really, really like the cover. Uh, if you don't know who Osamu Tezuka is, he's pretty much the grandfather of manga, right? He is responsible for Astro Boy. So if you can imagine, the guy who made Astro Boy also made quite a few uh, more adult-oriented manga. So... Let's take a quick look. This one comes with a Blu-ray and a DVD. And it comes with the behind the scenes, interviews with staff and cast, deleted scenes and alternate ending. And one thing that I think is kind of funny, uh, it is rated 18 for necrophilia. So I don't know if that's a spoiler. Um, yeah, I was pretty surprised to see that. So I guess it's a bit of a spoiler because that shit would have been a shock. And the next one is from one of my favorite, if not my absolute favorite, Japanese directors of all time. That is Takeshi Kitano. And this is Kids Return. While I was getting my master's in film, Filmstruck, this is before the Criterion Channel came around, actually had a spotlight on Kitano's movies. And I remember seeing Sonatine... I think from the video store age, because it was one of those movies that Quentin Tarantino put out on his Rolling Thunder Films thing. I remember seeing a little bit of Zatoichi on Robert Rodriguez's television channel. But anyway, I got to see quite a few of his films. Uh, I'm a big fan of Boiling Point. That was my entry. I really like Violent Cop. I like all of the Codas, all three of the Codas. My favorite's probably Hanabi. If I had to pick one, it's probably Hanabi, because I think it's astounding but i'm excited to go and fill in the gaps and a lot of these films that i picked up here are the ones that i had to fill in the gaps because i wasn't region free for a while and now that i am i can actually go and grab these uh different ones and kids return is one of them if i remember this is the one that's basically about two best friends i think one of them boxes or some shit i can't really remember but i remember watching like 10 minutes of it and the illegal copy that my friend got me was pretty corrupted and the subtitles were garbage, so I couldn't finish it. This one comes with a making of new audio commentary by a film scholar and it's just the disc. It's bare bones. I really don't care. I'm just happy to have access to Kitano films. And one thing you'll notice is that pretty much all of the Kitano films that Third Window puts out have this uh, really interesting kind of minimalist cover art, uh, which is pretty funny because his frames, although they are absolutely gorgeous and look like paintings, can be a bit minimalist here and there. So it kind of fits in with what he does. All right, so this next one is by a director that I've heard of, but I actually haven't seen any of his work, and that is Toshiaki Toyota. And this film is Porno Star. I remember seeing that a box set recently came out of his by Third Window, and I was interested, but I really didn't know anything about him. So I figured this would be a pretty good entry point to it. This is his debut film, and reading the synopsis is pretty interesting. Basically, I believe it's about a kind of loner type of dude who's really nihilistic, uh, and one day he just decides to go out and start killing Yakuza. And I think he gets embroiled in some kind of plot or some kind of scheme or some kind of gang. I don't really know because the synopsis is kind of vague. But the cover art and the fact that I want to learn more about Toyota and the fact that the synopsis sounds absolutely badass was more than enough for me to jump into this, especially for a sale price. 
And this has audio commentary by Tom Mez, who actually does a lot of the commentary for the Japanese Arrow films. He also wrote a few books through Arrow books. I think he did one on the Lone Wolf and Cub series, which is fantastic. So very excited to see Tom Mez on here. And it has an interview with Toyota and a trailer. So next one I got is one by Scion Sono, and it is Coldfish. I recently got Love Exposure, which we'll talk about in another video, another haul video. I know a little bit about Scion Sono. I've seen Why Don't You Go Play in Hell. I've seen Anti-Porno. I've seen Prisoners of the Ghost Land, which... Uh, I think Sono is an interesting figure in Japanese film. Uh, one that I definitely want to tackle, especially because I hear Love Exposure is fantastic. I also hear Coldfish is really good, and I really liked Why Don't You Go Play in Hell. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to start jumping into a little bit more of Sono. This one comes with a bunch of different special features. It has an exclusive interview with journalist Jake Adelstein. Really? Holy shit, Jake Adelstein. I think that's the guy that wrote Tokyo Vice. Yo, that's pretty badass. <laughs> so it's an interview with him with jake adelstein on the saitama dog lover serial murders kids yo wait no wait i remember this okay no this this case is in tokyo vice yeah okay this guy sorry i didn't realize this i didn't read this beforehand so now i'm like even more excited to watch this thing uh, comes with two exclusive interviews with Coldfish scriptwriter on creation of both the film and original artwork and a theatrical trailer. Yeah, I remember reading Tokyo Vice, and I really, really liked it. So I'm excited to, uh, I'm definitely excited to jump into this one now that I know a little bit more. I, I knew it said based on true events, but yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, the next one is another Scion Sono film, Love and Peace. Don't know much about this one. Really like the cover art. Saw that it was Scion Sono, and that was more than enough for me to drop, I think it was maybe $13 US. If I remember, this has something to do with a guy that, that raises a turtle or something. He talks to a turtle, which kind of reminds me of Yurashima Taro, and I'm kind of wondering if it's a play on the old tale of Yurashima Taro, and if I'm pronouncing that wrong, sorry. It kind of makes me wonder if that's what it is which is something that we've seen time and time again. There's actually an Ultra Q episode that's based on that. I think it's called Grow Little Turtle. Grow, Grow Little, I don't know. This one comes with the making of the special effects and a theatrical trailer. And there's the disc. Now this next one actually isn't a blind buy. I have seen this one and I really, really love it. It is Kitano's Kikujiro. I guess this is what you would call Kitano's kids movie? It's still pretty messed up. It's still pretty dark. Definitely not what we would look at as a kid's movie in the US, but I really, 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 really like it. Basically, this little kid comes in contact with a old aging Yakuza, and the Yakuza kind of uses him to go to the horse track. They go gambling with each other, they get in all these little misadventures, and then it kind of turns into a drama at the end. You know, we learn more about the characters and their backstory, and it's kind of tragic and sad and all that. But it's really, really well done. Very, very beautiful. Once again, has all of that wonderful framing that Kitano is known for. Minimalist. Just, just fantastic. If there's one that you were curious whether or not you would like Kitano's work, I would say start with this or Hanabi. I started with Boiling Point, that's cool, but I kind of think this is a little bit more his speed, especially uh, with how sparse and honest it is. And this comes with a 90 minute documentary on the making of Kikujiro. And it comes with a little booklet showing you all the things that Third Window Films puts out. The next one I actually bought for me and my fiance because oddly enough, we watch Takashi Miike films together. I have no idea how I got her into Takashi Miike, uh, but I did. And this one is Lesson of Evil. Don't know much about it. Saw a trailer. If I remember, it's about a... <laughs> teacher that just starts gunning down his students. It looked ridiculous, it looked violent, it looked crazy. Exactly what I've come to expect from Mike. This one has a two hour making of and a new UK trailer. There's the disc. The final two are two more Kitanos. I think I have, I think I have all the Kitanos except for Samatine. So I have to look into getting Samatine. But this is Dolls. Once again, had a version of this. Uh, subtitles were garbage, looked really bad, but regardless, 
excited to finally have it. This one comes with an interview with the man himself and a few other people behind the scenes and a video from the premiere at the Venice Film Festival. Here's the disc. And the final one is one that I got really invested in uh, and realized that the subtitles were once again complete shit. It is Takeshi Kitano's A Scene at the Sea. I think this is an earlier Kitano. I think this was right after Violent Cop. So I I don't remember if, if Violent Cop was his first, then I think Boiling Point, and then I think this. And this has new audio commentary by film critic Jasper Sharp. And that's the disc. I am very excited about this haul. This is my first time actually importing from the UK. I will absolutely positively do it again. And I will probably try to buy every single fucking Japanese movie that Third Window puts out. Because that's how bad I am with collecting Japanese movies. Uh, it could be something that I don't even remotely know anything about or even care about. It could be something that I think looks like shit. I will still buy it because I love Japanese cinema. All right, so if you liked the video, hit like, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment. All right, and I will see you in the next one.